Hello and welcome to Limitless TV. My name is Kez and over the next few episodes we're going to be exploring some big questions. Many people believe science and the Bible are at odds. Tim Mitchin, an Australian comedian, said science adjusts its views based on what's observed. Faith is the denial of observation so that belief can be preserved. Essentially he's saying faith is ignorance, but is this true? Are science and the Bible really in opposition, or is there more to this? I think that religion should be criticised on intellectual grounds as providing a competitor to the scientific explanation of life and the universe. Because the God who created this universe, if it was created by God, is quite clearly a maniac. If you don't believe in God, then where's your moral barometer? Science does not rule out the existence of a creator by, by definition because we don't know how the universe began. Full stop. But we have a hope there's a plan in this book of redemption. God has a plan for the future. Your future, and God is interested in you. I'm here with my friend Mark. Mark, you're a Christian, but you're also a really smart guy. Just say that again. You're a really smart guy. <laughs> Thank you very really much. Smart yeah, guy. Really smart guy. Yeah. How, being a smart guy, yeah. can you hold this tension of believing in science and believing in the Bible, when so many people say it's impossible yeah. to believe both. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm not a scientist, so I'm not going to pretend I'm a scientist. That is a shame. I know. He's gone right down, hasn't yeah, it? Now, yeah. not so intelligent I now. I thought you were so smart. Um, but I am a thinker and um, I like to be objective. I like to think things through. I, I, I wanted to be a lawyer. And what, what a lawyer would do is, or what the court system would do is often bring in expert people to comment on things. So where you want expert opinions on a certain subject to get their insight and their wisdom to help build up the case. And so that's very much the approach that I use when it comes to science. I'm going to bring in some experts. Uh, many years ago, I was delivering um, a sixth form lesson and uh, I'd been invited to speak on why I believe um, in God and then so that was like a 15 minute slot and then I was given like sort of 40 minutes give or take to kind of field some questions as I was doing my presentation I could see this young uh, fella on the front row and you you didn't need a degree in body language to work out he did not agree with anything that I was saying and uh, so it came as no surprise and I said right anybody got any questions uh, he was straight up and um, so um, I said to him, yes, yeah, let me take your question. He says, the problem with you Christians, and I kind of brace myself when anybody comes at me like that. He says, you only believe what you read in a book. All right? And what people tell you. That's all you believe in. So I looked at him, I said, yeah, fair point. He went, oh, is it? I went, well, you said it, not me. He said, well, yeah, I didn't expect you to answer that way. I said, yeah, well, that's mainly why I answered that way. Um, now, for people who are Christians, they would argue that there's a kind of an inner thing goes on as well. And, and I get that, and that's totally true. But for people who are not really uh, believers or Christians, it, it, it does appear that we, we, we read a book and we believe what it says, and we listen to what people tell us. So I said to the young fellow, I said, oh, tell me a little bit about what you believe just before I answer your question and I don't I don't know what it is to this day but it was a something ist or it had an ist in it okay and uh, so we kind of just chatted a little around I said, that's really fascinating believing me it was really fascinating genuinely interesting so I looked and I said um, where do you get that from we said well it's true in it I said but it's not what I asked is it where did you get that from he said well it's true in it I said but it's not what I asked I said I'm gonna ask you one more time 
Where did you get that from? He didn't have chance to inhale, let alone exhale, before somebody was clearly a, a Christian, a Jesus follower, in the, in the kind of the back of the classroom with her ears steaming and the veins going like that. She shouted out, he got it from a book. <laughs> I looked at her and you didn't. He said, I did, I did, I did. So I said to him, how come it's okay for you to believe what you believe when you get it from a book and somebody tells you, but it's not okay for me to believe what I believe because I got it from a book and because somebody tells me. He said, well, the Bible's a lot of rubbish, isn't it? I said, ah, that's a different argument. You see, his problem wasn't that I believe what I believe because I read it in a book and somebody told me. His problem, quote unquote, is that the Bible's a load of rubbish because it's unscientific. It's unscientific. I pointed out to him, well, I agree and disagree. The Bible's never been held up as a scientific textbook, but neither is it unscientific either. So it is possible that when you understand what the Bible's about and you understand what science is about, it is possible for them to live side by side. A friend of mine was a professor in chemistry at Loughborough University. And uh, I was interviewing him once and he said, I said to him rather, how can you hold in tension the Bible and science? And he said, my science informs my, my faith and my faith informs my science, which I just absolutely love. Have you ever heard of Professor Brian Cox? I have. I love Professor Brian what Cox. A what a guy. He's like this amazing scientist and he's a fantastic communicator. And, and he said this, I love this, he called for, for believers and non-believing scientists to acknowledge each other's contribution to human beings, search for meaning and to avoid toxic dismissals of different worldviews. Essentially what he's saying is Christians stop dissing science and science stop dissing Christians because we both bring a valuable contribution to the search that human beings have. You know, you'll have seen all this investigation into Mars. Where are we from? See, this is for me. This is for me where science and, and faith come together. Science can tell us how we got here, but it can't really tell us what we do now we are here. And I think that for me is where the Bible and faith and Christianity can answer questions that science can't answer. Now, I do believe that the Bible tells us how we got here too but i think we have lots of arguments about the process of how we got here christians and and, and non-christians alike have argued that and i want to suggest look let, let's let's put the the process because i'm not being funny but i'm not really bothered how i got here i've got all on working out what i do now i am here and i think only the bible and a relationship with god can truly answer that question Mark, there are many different versions of the Bible, different interpretations of the Bible. How can we trust it? Yeah, yeah. Really important question. I think for me, I'd love if there was some consistency here, right? Because um, people do say that the Bible disagrees with the Bible, but science disagrees with science, but people don't throw science out. And I think that's a really important thing. Why do we allow for what we think um, why do we like that? That's okay. But again, a lack of consistency, as I mentioned in that illustration at the beginning with the young fella, it, it does look like the Bible disagrees with the Bible. And, and some of that is because we have a, a misunderstanding of some of the cultural stuff behind. So most of the, the Bible is written through Jewish eyes in a Jewish context to Jewish people. And I'm from Bradford. So there's a lot I don't get. And so to help me fully understand what the Bible says, we have to just take a step back into the original culture. Now we can do that with the Bible because we have um, loads of um, uh, a, a chain of events, a chain of, of documents, we can trace it back through. A little bit like when you um, work on a Word document or a Pages document if you're an Apple person. And if you make some small changes, you, you, you call it a version, you know, version 1 or version 1A, version 1A, version 1 if you know, then you go through that. And what you do is you can trace it back through all those documents and see what's changed. Now we can do that with the Bible. We can look back because we have all that history and we 
notice that nothing of any real significance has changed the same messages coming through to the point where if you take so a book in the Old Testament part of the Bible, which is the older part of the Bible, dates back to 400 BC. If you compare it to, say, the New International Version, which is an up-to-date version of the Bible, and you go back to the original uh, writings, we can see that nothing's changed. It's just not helpful with the word versions, because yeah. it makes it look like oh, we don't want that one, we want to do a better one. It's not, it's just that language changes so much. So we have to take moments in history where we look at it and say, look, that if we continue to use those words, it's going to change the meaning. So we go back to the original writing and say, right, how can we best articulate in today's culture what was written uh, back then? So it can look like there's some massive changes and significant changes but it's not there's not different versions it just looks like there are and i have to say the use of the word version is not particularly helpful but here's the interesting thing people don't throw the whole of science out even though science disagrees with science so at the moment there's a resurgence of a of an old debate which is do we live in a universe or a multiverse i'm not going to go into what that means mainly because i haven't got a clue but there is <laughs> the debate has has made a resurgence and and scientists are saying that all the evidence going back to that evidence thing that we're we're investigating in these programs all the evidence proves we live in a multiverse but other scientists are saying no all the evidence proves that we live in a universe but here's the deal proof is the subjective interpretation of evidence so we can look at evidence we come from a bias so it can prove what we want it to prove but essentially the whole the whole beauty about science is it goes on this journey to 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 to, to kind of say yeah we believe science proves this but it no longer proves it. Let's bring that right up to date. COVID-19. All the science suggested that we knew about that a herd mentality is what was needed. Then we changed. And we're getting new sciences coming in and tell us we've, we've now got to wear masks, whereas science didn't show that we needed to wear masks. So if you take a snapshot of a scientific um, proof or a scientific case, you might say at this moment in time, science proves this but go forward 10 years ago and science is proving something else so i think we've got to be really really careful about how much validity we put on science and suggest that it's unchanging and that there's no disagreement between it if we're going to say the bible seems to disagree with other parts of the bible so let's throw it out then let's do the same with science but i would suggest to you it's a progressive discovery of knowledge. In fact, education, Arthur C. Clarke, a science fiction writer, used to have a program back in the day. He said, education is a progressive discovery of what we don't know, which I love that. I love that. So science and the Bible, they can go hand in hand and should go hand in hand. And actually, just to kind of to hit one thing on the head, there are lots of scientific discoveries which the Bible talked about way before science discovered them, like sometimes 2,000 years, 3,000 years after science discovered them. We haven't got time to go into those uh, on this programme, but there are loads of things, for example, like the earth just kind of hanging there, the, 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 the spherical nature of the earth, the fact that the seabed has mountains and has valleys. Wow. So I do think the Bible and science can walk hand in hand but maybe we've just got to be a little bit more open-minded. Amazing. Thank you so much, Mark. That's been super helpful. Mark spoke about different ways in which the science and the Bible have worked together. If you want to find out more, you can read these books. Can Science Explain Everything by John Lennox and Answers to Tough Questions by Josh McDowell. Thanks for watching. Keep your eyes peeled for the next episode in which we'll be exploring the question, are all faiths basically the same? See you then.